Today we're going to be demonstrating an IVU. Sometimes you'll hear this called an IVP, uh, but we do refer to it now as an IVU. The routine views that we're going to be demonstrating are going to be uh, our scout, our tomo scout, and then after the patient has been injected with contrast, we'll do three tomograms. Uh, we're going to measure with a caliber here shortly, and uh, then we'll, we'll, that's how we do, determine what cuts to do on our tomograms. You'll then do an, a five-minute film. Then we're going to wait five minutes. We'll take another film at 10 minutes, and then we'll wait another five minutes and take a 15-minute film, and we'll take one more tomogram. And the tomogram will be determined by, of the three tomograms we had done previously, which one uh, looked the best is the cut that we will do for our 15-minute tomogram. And then there are additional films that you may have to do according to what the radiologist wants to see. Uh, you may have to do um, a uh, standing KUB uh, for a patient who has a male patient who may have prostate problems, or for a male or female patient who has problems with prolapsed uh, bladder. Uh, they'll also want an erect abdomen for. Uh, you may have to do obliques of the patient. You may have to do an RPO and an LPO pos uh, position. I will demonstrate one of those. And what they're looking on that is uh, they're looking at the kidney and the ureter according to what position they're in. You look at the upside kidney and the downside ureter. So those are all additional films that you may have to do. You might, and then at the end, of course, you will have to have the patient go to the bathroom and you'll, you'll follow that by doing a post-void film. Now all, these have to be, all this has to be annotated onto the film. You need to annotate the time, uh, the film, so you need to you mark what time that you actually started injecting the contrast, what time the 5, the 10, and the 15 minute film was done. You can also do additional film time-wise as far as the doctor may want you to do uh, a fifth, after the 15, a 20, or a 30 minute, or even an hour film, and all this has to be annotated on the film. Uh, some of the other things uh, with this as far as the contrast and, and uh, some of those things also the BUN and creatin and the GFR levels that you have to know on the patient. Uh, I do want you to know when the patient comes into the room you need to have that information uh, because those are things that we have to know and we're going to go over that in pharmacology uh, and lecture and also in procedures lecture explain that in a little bit more detail. Uh, today what I want to do is I want to demonstrate just the positions and talk about some of those things. So we are going to demonstrate just the KUB, which is what we're going to do as far as a scout film goes. Uh, and as you've learned previously, uh, when you did that, have our 14 by 17, it'll be lengthwise. Our technique will be 77 to 81 KV, and it'll be center cell. So we've got the film in. We are center locked, and we're centered to our film. And we're going to palpate then the crest on the patient. And we're going to center, uh, on a female it's usually right at the level of the crest, on a male sometimes we do go a little below the crest, and then at the MSP our culminations will be IR borders up and down and to the skin margins then side to side. Again techniques will be 77 to 81 uh, center cell and you'll make exposure then on expiration, helping to raise the diaphragm so we can see more of the abdomen. Okay, once we've taken this then we're going to do our tomogram. We're going to change films. We're going to use an 11 by 14 and it will go crosswise. Now, when we are doing these on the patient and we've made our measurements, not only do you have to use your marker, uh, you also need to use a, a separate marker that will actually mark what cut you are doing after we have measured here with the caliber. So I'll go ahead and put my marker on here. And then we're going to take, this is our caliber, and we're going to measure. I'm going to have the patient rise up just a little bit, put it underneath them, and at the rib margins here, we're going to have the lower rib margins, I'm going to measure. And then we're going to take the bottom number right here, which is 19, we're going to divide that by 3. So I'm going to just base it on 18 since that's a little easier. So that's a little bit, that's about a 6 centimeter cut. So we're going to take, we're going to go one above and one below. So that means our cuts will be 5, 6, and 7 centimeters. So take this out, and we can shield on this one. So we are going to place the shield on our patient. Okay. All right. So the machine here is not set up actually for tomograms. Each department has their own 
uh, machine that does tomograms. And you're going to have to learn that as you're in the departments uh, looking over how to do an IVU. The techs can go over with you what cuts you're going to do and how you're going to set it up. But what a tomogram basically is, the machine is actually going to move over top of the patient and it's going to take an x-ray and it's going to take the x-ray at the cut that we set it for. Those measurements we use there, the 6 to 7 and the 8 centimeter cuts, that's the level it's actually exposing and we're going to get a picture of just that cut. Okay, That's what we're trying to see. Now as far as our centering goes, we're going to actually palpate the patient here and at the lower rib margins is basically where we're going to center at and at the MSP. Now a lot of times if you can't palpate it on a larger patient you can just run your hand around it and then when you get to the bottom that's your centering point. As far as collimation goes you're going to be up and down to the IR borders and to the skin margins side to side. Mark replacement, very got it on the film here and again you are going to put the tomogram cut that you're doing at that time. It raises and lowers uh, as far as what cuts you're going to do that's what you're going to put here. I usually do the center uh, so our cuts were going to be five, six, and seven centimeters. For our scalp, I generally use uh, the. I would do the six centimeter cut because that's my middle cut. Okay. So once we have taken the the scalp tomo and the tomo for uh, uh, the tomogram scalp, we are going to take and go to the radiologist. Now we need to know some information. We need to know uh, the history of the patient, where they're hurting, why are we doing this exam. Uh, you need to know their BUN and their CRAT and the GFR. Uh, this is information we're going to cover in lecture, but you need to know all these things. Be prepared when you see the radiologist. He'll tell you then how much contrast he wants you to inject. Usually it's 100 cc's. Okay? So we then are going to actually inject the patient with the contrast, and then we're going to be ready for, have our film ready for a five minute film. Now generally our tomograms are taken, as soon as you inject and finish your film's already in the bucky, and you inject, we go ahead and start doing our tomograms. The tomograms are wanting to be done on what they call the blushing stages. Okay, so as soon as that contrast hits the kidneys, it sort of gives it, it sort of brightens up. Okay, so that's uh, so they call it the blushing stage. And then by the time you take your three tomograms, it's been five minutes, so you can go ahead right then and do your five-minute film. Now you're going to take and progress through this, and as you get to the 15-minute film, you do want to take and go to the radiologist with all your films you've taken and he will look at them and then he will make that determination about what you need to do. Routinely they're going to do the obliques and sometimes they're going to be doing, uh, they'll probably have, definitely do a post void but they'll also sometimes have you do more, more cuts because they want to see a little higher or lower on the kidney. That's not uncommon and also time wise if they're not seeing it, it's a progression. They're wanting to see this as uh, it hits the kidneys through the ureter to the bladder. Well, they're wanting to try and see all the ureters. So sometimes, just think of a pouring water in a water hose. You know, it's not hit the whole hose at one time. So as it's pouring through, you're watching it progress all the way to the bladder. Now, one of the things I do want to go ahead and demonstrate for you is how to do an oblique for our oblique kidneys. Now, as far as film size, we're going to go back to a 14 by 17. Again, it will be lengthwise. I have my patient roll up toward her left side. Lay back on that. Now, since we're doing and patient is in the LPO position, we're going to use the left marker on the left side of the film. And again, this is about a 30 degree oblique. So, you know, if you take your hand and you look, here's 45, so we wanted to roll back maybe just a little bit. We're actually trying to get the kidney uh, and, and ureter away from the spine so we can see it a little bit better. So as far as centering goes, we're going to go at the level of the crest and then to the, uh, the new, I call it the MSP, not really good terminology, but to the center of the patient as they're obliqued is what I'm trying to do. And I should see collimation all the way back to here and also all the way over to here. I've already got my left marker over here on the bucky. Our collimation is going to be to the IR borders. And in this position right here, we should be seeing the, we're going to actually remove the shield here also from the tomogram. We should actually be seeing the upside kidney, which will be the right, and the downside ureter. So if the patient is in an LPO position, that's what you're seeing. If the patient was in an RPO, you'd see the reverse. You're going to see the upside kidney, which would then be the left, and the downside ureter, which will be the right. Okay. So these are our oblique views uh, for the IVU. 
The other view that's routinely is going to be done uh, for this is, of course, going to be the post void. Now, after we're completely done, the radiologist has looked at all the films and said, yes, it's all he needs. The patient will then go to the restroom, and then after they have done, you, a lot of times, especially if you're looking, if there's blood in the urine, or if the patient has had, if they're looking for kidney stones, then sometimes you'll actually use a strainer, let the patient strain their urine through uh, a, the strainer, and you actually look at it to verify there is or there is not something in it. Okay? If there is, you're going to keep that sample so the doctor can actually see it. Okay? A couple of things I want to go back and, uh, and talk about a little bit too. One thing uh, is the talking about, uh, my mind just went blank. Can you pause it? No, don't pause it. Okay, so here's one of your little funny things you all can laugh <laughs> at me about here shortly, uh, as I'm sure you're going to. Um, one of the things, I can't remember the things we were talking about now. My mind, I was thinking of it as we were doing it. Can y'all remember? It's void. Oh, I know what it was. Well, I, I apologize. One of the things I want to make sure I stress with you is, on a patient who comes in who doesn't have a catheter, perfectly fine to go ahead. If they do need to go to the restroom, they need to do this prior to the patient uh, getting started getting the injection because once you've injected the contrast they cannot go to the restroom. The other thing I want to talk about is a patient who comes in, it could be an inpatient or it could be an outpatient, either one, but they have a catheter. You must, must clamp off that catheter prior to injecting contrast because if you do not, as it hits the bladder, it will actually drain out. Okay, the contrast will. We actually, in part of the test, what we're wanting to look at is actually look the, at the bladder as it's filling up. So you have to clamp the catheter on any patient who comes in that has a catheter. And these are our IVU uh, films and uh, I guess accessory films that you may have to continue to do uh, on the patients.